Welcome to this multimedia presentation of the LabVolt Telephony Training System, a powerful and innovative tool for studying modern telephone networks. The cornerstone of the system is a reconfigurable training module provided with a digital signal processor similar to those used in actual central offices of the public telephone network. Using a digital signal processor allows the reconfigurable training module to be programmed to act as different major elements of telephone network, such as a central office or a private automatic branch exchange. A host computer is used to download programs to the digital signal processor of the reconfigurable training module, as well as to control and monitor system operation. As you will see in this presentation, the telephony training system wonderfully combines the realism of hardware operation with the flexibility of software simulation. Let's set up a central office to show you what the system can do. Here is the reconfigurable training module that contains a digital signal processor. It has three slots where interface modules can be installed. Here, a dual analog line interface module is being installed to make a link between the reconfigurable training module and two analog telephone sets. An Ethernet port connector, located on the back panel of the reconfigurable training module, is connected to either a network card installed in a host computer or to the local area network. This sets up a high-speed data link that provides communication between the host computer and the reconfigurable training module. The setup of the central office ends with a few clicks on the host computer's mouse to start the LabVolt Telephony Training System software. This initiates download of the proper program to the reconfigurable training module. When download is completed, an LED lights up on the interface module installed in the reconfigurable training module to indicate that the central office is operational. A diagram of the central office also appears on the host computer screen. The zoom function allows closer view of this diagram to reveal the architecture of the central office. More and more details appear as you zoom in. The diagram can also be panned to observe any particular circuit in the central office. The telephony training system is a real operational system not a simulator. For example, when the handset of a telephone is lifted off the cradle, a DC current starts to flow through the telephone line and a dial tone can be heard in the handset earpiece. That's the digital signal processor in the reconfigurable training module that acts as a central office. The DC current is measured by the system and its value is indicated in the central office diagram on the host computer screen. When the handset is replaced on the telephone set, the DC current returns to zero. When a call is performed, the system provides the usual call progress tones to the calling party. The system also makes the called party's telephone set ring and sends caller identification data to this telephone set. While these actions take place, the host computer screen is continuously updated to display what's happening in the system. Hello? When the called party answers, Hi, the system establishes the connection oh, and a telephone conversation Hi, can take place. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm very busy at the moment. But, uh, it's good. Well, bye. Calls to a busy number or a wrong number cause the system to react with the proper call progress tones. In fact, the system does everything real central offices do. Like actual central offices, 
the Lab Volt Central Office can be configured to comply with different national standards in regards to the ringing cadence, the call progress tones, and other technical parameters. For example, let's change the ringing cadence to the one used in the United Kingdom and make a call. As you can hear, the called party's telephone set rings at the cadence used in the United Kingdom. Numerous test points are available everywhere in the central office diagram displayed on the host computer screen. Probes can be connected to these test points to observe signals in both the time and frequency domains using virtual instruments included in the system. For example, connecting instrument probes to an analog line interface allows observation of the various signals traveling on the corresponding telephone line during a telephone call. Using the mouse, all instrument settings are performed directly from the host computer screen. The various controls on these virtual instruments are very similar to those on actual instruments. Once all settings are done, the instrument controls can be hidden to save space on the host computer screen. When the handset of the telephone connected to the interface where the instrument probes have been installed is lifted off the cradle, the oscilloscope displays the waveform of the dial tone signal and the spectrum analyzer displays the frequency content of this signal. When a first digit is dialed on the telephone set, the instruments show that the corresponding DTMF dialing signal combines with the dial tone signal on the telephone line. As other digits are dialed, the waveform and frequency content of each DTMF dialing signal produced by the telephone set are immediately displayed on the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer respectively, thereby allowing real-time signal observation and analysis. Once a complete telephone number has been dialed, the ring back tone from the central office is displayed. Similarly, when the called party answers, the voice signals of both parties are displayed. Although virtual in nature, the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer display real signals. A few hardware test points are also available on the front panel of each interface module. This allows signal observation using conventional instruments. The telephony training system is also provided with a unique learning tool named the Call Processor Log that allows the operation of central offices to be studied in a manner not easily achieved with conventional instruments. The Call Processor Log consists of a window on the host computer screen. When a telephone call is taking place, all actions performed by the call processor of the central office are recorded in the call processor log. At the end of the call, recording is stopped. Notice that even a single telephone call results in a long list of actions in the call processor log. Additional information can be obtained for each action recorded. In most cases, the additional information provides details about the different phases of the action. Whenever an action recorded in the call processor log is clicked using the mouse, elements are highlighted in sequence in the central office diagram to illustrate what happened during this action. Moreover, clicking all actions in the order they appear in the call processor log enables a complete review of the events that occurred in the central office during a call. As mentioned earlier, the reconfigurable training module of the telephony training system can also act as a private automatic branch exchange, similar to those used in many enterprises. A private automatic branch exchange, or PABX, is a system that provides basic telephone service within an enterprise, 
additional functions such as call holding, call transfer, and conference calling, and a link with the local central office of the public telephone network. Let's demonstrate this functionality by converting the central office into a PABX. The first step in the conversion consists in replacing the dual analog line interface in the reconfigurable training module with a digital telephone interface. Then, ISDN type digital telephone sets are connected to the digital telephone interface module. Finally, another program is downloaded to the reconfigurable training module from the host computer. Once program download is completed, the PABX diagram appears on the host computer screen. This diagram reveals that the PABX consists mostly of the same major blocks of circuitry as the central office. However, the architecture of the various circuits in the PABX greatly differs from that of the circuits in the central office. As was the case in the central office, Probes can be connected to test points in the PABX diagram and the virtual instruments can be used to perform real-time signal observation and analysis in both the time and frequency domains. Furthermore, the call processor log becomes a learning tool of prime importance since the operation of the PABX relies extensively on processors and the use of a digital signaling protocol. When a call is taking place in the PABX, all actions performed by the call processor are recorded in the log, as was the case in the central office. Moreover, all the digital signaling messages exchanged between the call processor and the ISDN digital telephone sets connected to the PABX are also recorded to the call processor log. This enables thorough investigation of the ISDN signaling protocol. As was the case in the central office, all events recorded to the call processor log can be reviewed to illustrate the complete sequence of events that occurred in the PABX during a call. Analog and digital trunk interface modules can be installed in the reconfigurable training modules to interconnect central offices and PABXs. A simple but complete telephone network can thus be implemented in the classroom laboratory to study the operation and use of both analog and digital trunks. A complete set of courseware material, including lab manuals, instructor guides, and a user guide, are included in the telephony training system. These manuals and guides cover key topics such as the analog access to the telephone network, the operation of central offices and PABXs, the use and operation of both analog and digital trunks in modern telephone networks, and more.